over for dinner tonight? No, not tonight. He's having it out with his landlord. They've been stalling him on a paint job, so I told him, what are you doing with the cabinet? Harry, this new wood was too green. You cook, I carpet. Okay, honey, you try and get the glasses out. Anyway, I told Arch, I told Arch, Uh, honey, uh, the doctors agree we drink entirely too much water with our meals. Let's skip the glasses. <laughs> now it fell off in your hand, right? Yeah. Uh, shall I get out the silverware? Well, I put them in that drawer. Of course, the knob's off that, too. <laughs> well, I'm glad we're having chicken tonight. We can eat that with our fingers. <laughs> Good luck with the noodles. <laughs> I won't be kidding, honey. What were you trying to tell me now about Arch and his landlord? Well, I gave him some advice. Again? Well, I didn't volunteer it. He came to me and asked me, and a, fr a friend has a problem. Can I turn him down when he wants my advice? Well, only if you're interested in his welfare. Now, some of the best advice Arch ever had came from me. Right now, his landlord is trying to take advantage of him. Can I stand by and let this happen? No. So I told him, lay it right on the line to him. Either he paints your apartment, or you don't pay your rent this month. A simple case of either or. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Kate, Harry. Well, I laid it right on the line to my landlord. I said, either you paint the apartment or you don't get your rent this month. And I casually went out for a pack of chewing gum. When I got back, the door was bolted and my things were piled up in the street. I don't know why you're telling me all this. Harry, I took your advice. Oh, no. Don't try to blame me. I didn't say a word about going out for a pack of chewing gum. <laughs> Harry, I don't blame you at all. I don't blame you at all, Harry. It's certainly not your fault that, that I, I'm out in the cold with nowhere to go. In fact, that's what I came over here for, to tell Until you that you I don't... find another place, you stay here. Harry, I don't want you to ask me just because you feel guilty. <laughs> guilty, me? Me feel guilty? What have I got to feel guilty about? My conscience is clear. If you think for one minute I'm asking you to stay because I feel guilty, then you can go to a hotel. The invitation is off. Okay, I'll go to a hotel. What are you trying to do, make me feel guilty? <laughs> Arch, for heaven's sake, if you don't stay, you won't sleep a wink all night. Well, if you're sure, then I'm not going to put you out, Kate. You know, you've only got one bedroom. Well, that's all right, honey. I can fix up the sofa in the living room. Won't that be awful narrow for you and Harry? <laughs> you are sleeping on the sofa. Thank you, Harry. Thank you for letting me stay. Ah, uh, forget it. You can't do little favors for your friends. Little favors? It's no little favor, Harry. It's a wonderful thing for you to do. I mean, after 10 years of friendship, I thought I knew you. But you still keep surprising me with your warmth and your, and your goodness. You know, frankly, I didn't expect hospitality like this. It's just overwhelming, Harry. Ah, uh, go home and pick up your things. I don't have to. <laughs> Dickens, he's Fenster, starring John Aston, Marty Ingalls, with Emmeline Henry. Created and produced by Leonard Stern. play with this grandfather of arches staring at me over my shoulder. <laughs> Probably telling you all my cards. If there's anything I can't stand, it's a kibitzer. <laughs> well, I'm all set for bed. Can't you do something about that picture? What bothers you, Harry? Yeah. I'll turn it around. You put a picture like that on the back of a picture of your grandfather? 
Why not? It's my grandmother. <laughs> you know, grandmothers were young once, you know. Look, Archie, if you're gonna go to bed so early, maybe we ought to play in the other room. Oh, no, no, I wouldn't dream of chasing you out. You stay right where you are. You won't bother me at all. Yep. Gin. <laughs> well, time for my nightly exercises. your exercise? One push-up? Why not two? What do you think I am, a health nut? <laughs> well, to bed. me 99 cards. <laughs> Sorry. The circus came to town. Aren't you sure we're not going to bother you now? You won't bother me a bit. Good night. Uh, excuse me. Can you deal a little softer, please? Honey, we are going to disturb you, oh, right? Oh, no, you won't disturb me at all. Good night. Who stretched? This is ridiculous now, Arch. We'll go and we'll play in the other room. That's all. Well, thanks very much, Kate. Actually, sometimes I do have a little trouble falling to sleep, you know? But once I get to sleep, nothing disturbs me at all. Well, good night, and thanks again for everything. Harry, you're a great guy. <laughs> good night. Yeah, good night, Arch. Come on, take that, honey. In the kitchen. Oh, it's okay. Once he gets like this, you can't wake him. At lunch, in five seconds, he's asleep. He's out for the whole hour. We could even play here. Oh, it's marvelous. I wish I could fall asleep that quickly and soundly. <laughs> Come on, honey, we'll play in the kitchen. Nah. Should have known it would happen. What'd you say? I didn't say anything. Just had to happen. That's Arch. He's talking in his sleep. Oh. Oh, well, come on, honey. We, we, we shouldn't eavesdrop. Come on. That stupid dumbhead. He's talking about me. <laughs> He could be talking about anybody. Why you? Gave me lousy advice? Of course it's me. How do you know? Because I was the last one to give him lousy advice. <laughs> Harry, all his fault. See? Harry Dickens. Sickens is more like it. <laughs> Sickens? Booted out, out in the street. That beautiful apartment. All the fault of that big Budinsky. Big Budinsky? Honey, he's talking in his sleep. He doesn't know what he's saying. Asleep or awake, it's the same mind at work. Those thoughts are coming from him. Deep inside him, that guy must hate me. Kate, I've learned one thing tonight. You never know who your enemies are till your friends fall asleep. <laughs> my lunch with you. Boy, Kate sure packs a great lunch. Those bologna sandwiches were delicious. No, well, I think I'll take a snooze. Hey, you know, Harry, if I didn't know that we were such good friends, I would think you weren't talking to me because you didn't, you know. It's so silly you're not talking to me. You're not talking to me, Harry. <laughs> Harry, say you're not talking to me, but talk to me. All right, I'll talk to you. Does uh, Big Budinsky mean anything to you? <laughs> Isn't he that new fellow on the bowling team? <laughs> All right. Does uh, this ring a bell? Harry Dickens. Sickens is more like it. Oh, that's terrible. That's nasty. Ooh, somebody said that about me. Somebody said that about... 
Oh, Harry, who could say a thing like that about you? Sweet, kind, wonderful you. <laughs> Point him out to me, Harry. Point him out to me, Harry, and I'll let him have it. Who is it? You, that's who. Yeah, well, I'll get... Me? <laughs> me? When did I... Oh, Harry, I couldn't say a thing like that, Harry. You know better than that. It's not me, Harry. Who said it's me? Have you ever considered there's another you? The sleeping you? <laughs> you talk in your sleep. Hate talk. Oh, Harry, no, I couldn't say a thing like that. Not to you. Harry, you're my best friend. I couldn't call you a big Budinsky. That was at 9.15 last night. <laughs> at 9.43, I was a lowlife and a two-headed snake. Oh, no. <laughs> Would you care to hear what came in on the 10 o'clock news? <laughs> no. No, Harry, I don't care what I said in my sleep, Harry. Harry, you're my best friend. I love you, Harry. Okay. Probably was a nightmare. Yeah, a nightmare. That's right. Oh, Harry. Oh, what a relief. Well, I think I'll catch those 40 winks now. <laughs> hey, you know, you know, Harry, I don't think I could ever sleep again if something happened between you and me. <laughs> hey, Harry, Bannister's looking for you. Oh, yeah? Uh, where's his office? He's using the principal's office. Okay, thanks. Hey, I wish I could do that. Just... Rack out whenever I had the chance. <laughs> Harry Sickens. <laughs> Oh, no, Mildred, I'm not the least bit annoyed. I'm, I'm glad your brother's in town. Oh, no, no, I like him. Uh, uh, look, Mildred, tell your brother he's welcome to stay with us as long as he wants. Well, yeah, Harry, well, I don't care how long. Like two I'm weeks, a month, you, you anything. Oh. No, I say I'll two weeks, a month. Harry, Mildred, hold on a minute. I can't Step hear. Step when you're asleep. No, that's not true, Harry. What are you trying to do? Gentlemen, gentlemen, what's going on it's out It's him. Here? He hates me. I don't hate you, Harry. Can't the you... minute he's asleep, he hates me. That's not true, Can't you Harry. just finish it outside in the hall? Harry, we can't do this in Mr. Bannister's office. The minute he's asleep, he hates you? Yeah. The minute he puts his arms behind his head and closes his eyes, out comes hate. Harry, you're wrong, Harry. I'd like you to fall asleep before witnesses once and you'll see how wrong I am. I dare you. Lie down on that couch and let Mel and Mr. Bannister listen. Mr. Bannister, can we use the couch? Well, it's most unusual. But I gotta prove it to him. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait out the phone. Please, I gotta, Mr. No, wait, Bannister, no, wait, we gotta please. do it. Wait, the phone. Mildred is on. Mildred, let me call you back. I'm very busy right now. I'm gonna watch a man sleep. <laughs> this is ridiculous, fellas. I can't fall asleep in front of people. You do it all the time. You're just afraid to find out the truth. Now sleep. Please hurry, Fenster. You're on company time. I can't, fellas. I can't fall asleep with people staring at me. Look, what do you do when you can't get to sleep and you're at home? Well, sometimes I read a book. That's it. Get him a book. I'll get it. I got one. Here's this one. is ridiculous. It'll never... Read. I first met Daphne on the night boat to Zanzibar. The moon-filled night framed her exotic beauty in soft, subtle shadows. My first thought was, oh, if she were only mine. Oh, to be close to those sensuous lips. Oh, to caress those soft shoulders, to embrace that slim waist. Suddenly, she came towards me. Her every movement was a symphony of... I can't do it. Oh, don't stop now. <laughs> it is the symphony. Wait a minute. Get rid of this book. Yeah, yeah. You know what I do when I want to get to sleep? I, I, I listen to the radio. Because the music on the radio... Yeah, that's it, music. But we don't have a radio. We don't need one. Lie down. Close your eyes. Skeeters are a humming on the honeysuckle vine. Sleep, Kentucky, babe. Sandman is a coming for this little lad of mine. Sleep, Kentucky, babe. Silvery moon is shining. 
People in the country can fall asleep a lot easier than people in the city. Yeah, yeah. A babbling brook. Yeah, yeah, and this can be the cool breezes, huh? Yeah. Hey, I do a whippoorwill. Whoa! Oh, uh, wait a minute. You're supposed to sleep. Yeah, I just now, now just, just imagine white, fluffy clouds rolling over rolling green hills and, and the patter of little deer's feet on the newly fallen leaves yeah. and the wind blowing the branches. It's the quiet. Peaceful, restful country. Mm. Oh, I'd like to throw that Mildred and her brother right out on the street. <laughs> was confronted with witnesses when Mel and Mr. Bannister told him they actually heard him talk against me in his sleep. All you've succeeded in doing, Harry, is upsetting Art. No, no, he's gonna get help. He's gonna see a doctor. You sent him to a doctor? He did some work in an office once for a Dr. McClinton who specializes in things like this. Oh, Harry, I don't know. All right, maybe you don't know, Kate, but I know. Believe me, I'm doing the right thing. There's a time to ignore things like this, and there's a time to speak up and say, hello. <laughs> Harry, Kate, I'd like you to meet them. Oh, the... come on in. Right this way. Uh, Harry, I'd like, I'd like you to meet them. What did the... the doctor say? Don't ask me. Ask the doctor. <laughs> That's a doctor? Yeah. Harry, Kate, I'd like you to meet Dr. Elsie McClinton. How do you do, sir? <laughs> Ma'am? <laughs> doctor? Docket? Call me Elsie. Yeah. Well, why don't we come in, Elsie? Well, actually, Elsie and I just stopped over for a moment to tell you that we... So you're a doctor. Yes. Isn't it gratifying how many women are practicing medicine these days? So you're a doctor. <laughs> so we finished playing What's My Line? Well, Harry, we only stopped over so for a second. So why don't we sit down? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Harry, then. They have handsome doctors on television, but between us, uh, you're a lot prettier than Ben Casey. <laughs> <laughs> She's got Dr. Zorba beat by a mile. Harry, do you only stop the... I hate people who take advantage of professional advice in the home, but I've been fighting a cold. Could you look into my throat? Well, I'm not a medical doctor. Look anyway. Harry, uh, Elsie is a psychologist. Oh, then your PhD is a doctorate in psychology. Yes. Up to I... now, I thought all psychologists and psychiatrists wore glasses and beards. Well, I do have glasses. I hope that's all. <laughs> 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 oh, dear. Harry, uh, I spoke to Elsie about our problem, Harry, and she said... Please, Arch, what I said was only a theory, conjecture. It takes time to arrive at a thorough diagnosis. Well, Harry, Elsie said that you and I are like, are like brothers with a natural rivalry going. And that my trouble is that I don't say what I feel. Well, what I said to Arch was that your relationship is reminiscent of siblings who love each other but also fight. That's very interesting. Yes, but again, I must say it's only hypothetical. Well, uh, hypothetically speaking, uh, how do we get him to go to sleep and uh, shut not only his eyes but his mouth too? <laughs> well, there have been cases where men have been helped by having their hostilities brought up to the surface. In other words, uh, he should say what he feels when he's awake. Well, I'm awake now, and I feel like dancing with a doctor. Come on, let's go. Harry, there's no need to worry about my problem anymore. I'm in good hands. I'm so sorry it had to be such a short visit. Oh, well, me too. I'll see you come back when you can stay longer. Yeah. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Uh, by the way, I'm uh, curious. Uh, how did you happen to choose your particular profession? Well, my father is a doctor, and my two brothers are doctors. Doctors run in the family. If they're built like you, they have to. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Arch, uh, would you give me a hand with these barbells? I want to move the rack. Oh, sure, Harry. Which one do you want? Would you hold this for me yeah. now? Oh, uh, hold that. That's heavy one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Where should I put it? All uh, right, I think over in that direction. Oh! Ooh. <laughs> ah, <hey>. Ooh. <laughs> Hey, I'm sorry, Arch. That must hurt. Hurt? It's killing me. Good. Now, say the first thing that comes into your mind. Huh? Say the first thing that comes into your mind. Well, I'm glad I fell on my foot instead of yours, Harry. That's not what you want to say. That can't be. What is it I want to say, Harry? You want to call me a clumsy, stupid oaf. Come on, say it. Say it. Harry, you're a clumsy, stupid oaf. Well, if you want me to. I want, I want. Harry, you're a... Harry, you're a... Oh, you're a nice fellow who inadvertently, inadvertently dropped the barbell out of your hand and on my foot for the third time today. Come on, now. Say what you're really thinking. I can, Harry. That's hopeless. I might as well go back to work. When I better get started on that diving board. Hi, Harry. Hey, what are you doing, Harry? Hey, watch it. Harry, you're gonna push me in. Harry! Hands down! Harry! There's something on your mind. Now spill it. I, I, I pushed you into the pool now. Now say what you're thinking. Say it. Well, it was sweet of you not to let me drown, Harry. I give up. I wanted to help you, but I'm not smart enough. Don't say that about yourself, Harry. Maybe your Dr. McClinton could do it, but not me. I'm incapable and incompetent. Don't say that about yourself. You're not incompetent. I am. Harry, I won't have anybody talking about you like that. Not even you. If I want to call myself incompetent, I'll do it. I'm incompetent. You're a stupid dope to call yourself incompetent. What did you call me? A stupid dope. That's it. You said it. Now, come on. What else am I? You're a, uh, you're a meddler. Attaboy. What else am I? You're a big mouth and a troublemaker. Come on, baby. Uh, talk to uh, me. And you're a pretty rotten carpenter, too. That's it. You've done it. Yeah. And you, and you never stay out of my life. You're always interfering. That's <laughs> enough. And you give me nothing but headaches. That's what you That's do. That's enough. Nothing but headaches. Yeah. And you're incompetent. Who's incompetent? You're incompetent. Me? Incompetent. Yes, you are. I wish you'd stay out of my life and you keep your big mouth shut and be quiet. Huh? That's it. Yeah, I've, I've had, had it. it. I'm asking you out of my life. Our friendship is over. Run. It's water over the dam. <laughs> Yeah, especially a murder mystery. We knew who did it, but we didn't know to whom. Yeah. You know, Arch would have loved that picture. Ah, oh, he's better off sleeping. He had a hard day telling me off. Ah, oh, dear, dear Harry. See, Kate, our plan worked. Now he loves me round the clock. Of course he does, honey. You never should have doubted him. Anyway, what a man says in his sleep shouldn't have upset you. Kate. <laughs> Kate, pretty girl, living doll. Oh, he's sweet. <laughs> she has to be. She's the world's worst cook. <laughs> what? Breakfast, lunch, dinner. Grr. <laughs> Poor wonderful Harry. She gets three shots a day at him. Well, I like that. Well, don't worry, honey. We know how to handle this now, don't we? Hmm, we certainly do. The first thing tomorrow morning, we throw him out in the street.
If you've enjoyed your journey on the TV Time Machine, please like and subscribe. We look forward to having you again on the TV Time Machine.